دكتور غادة قزامل كارديولوجي كونسلتنت ناشونال هارت انستيتيوت today we will speak about the management of ischemia patient in ER actually every day we can see a lot of patient with chest pain whatever it is typical or atypical chest pain in the ER and the our value in the ER is to select the patient in high risk and to manage them according to the guideline very rapidly. Uh, we can start by the uh, chest pain. When you, you have a patient in the ER with chest pain, there is a schedule and networking you should to initiate. Related to the schedule, you should to first to see the patient and take a short history and the ECG within 10 minutes. If you have time to make the ECG and uh, during the ECG uh, time uh, take a questionnaire from the patient in form of which type of chest pain if the chest pain is typical and the typical chest pain it have a three criteria the first criteria is it a little sternal chest pain uh, with heaviness uh, and squeezing in nature uh, with the specific radiation, it should to be radiated towards the left shoulder, uh, arm, and the uh, uh, jaw, or the, uh, the neck. And it is associated with, uh, and coming usually with a stress or cold uh, weather or something uh, arising it. And it continue for a 20 to 30 minutes without releasing by nitrates or rest or any maneuver. Uh, when the patient gives you a, a history of this typical chest pain, it is a classic of a chest pain related to a cardiac illness or angina, as we said. But sometimes it is associated, uh, it is a typical form of chest pain. It may be epigastric pain and it may be associated by nausea and vomiting. And this sometimes uh, not typical form of chest pain, but in a patient with the highest suspicious like diabetic patients, smokers, uh, 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 drug addicts, uh, 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 hypertensive with family history, all this group may direct your attention towards this chest pain mainly related to a, a cardiac cause. If the cardiac cause is the cause of this chest pain, we should to, uh, do an ECG very rapidly and your maximum time is 10 minutes. If it is less than 10 minutes, it will be good. When you uh, interpret the ECG, you can see the ECG changes in form of ST elevation or left bundle branch block. And sometimes this ECG is not so obvious and you may need to repeat the, uh, the ECG uh, for the patient. And from the ECG, you can diagnose if the patient is uh, any type of acute coronary syndrome, maybe ST elevation MI or he may be unstable or non STEMI, but if he is a ST elevation, there is ST elevation in the pericardial lead you, and in the limb lead. You should to localize the, which territory may be affected and categorize the patient if he is anterior STEMI, inferior STEMI, lateral, uh, global, if there is RV affection or not because this will affect the, uh, the maneuver. Sometimes if there is inferior STEMI and the RV infarction, the patient has a hypotension and he may need a fluid f with this, uh, the other uh, measurement. And if the patient is in a STEMI anterior or global, they may categorize your patient that this patient has a big caliper artery in form of proximal LAD and left main and we should to interfere uh, so rapidly. Uh, when you saw the patient and you, uh, you should to exclude rapidly the other cause of chest pain which may produce a contraindication for the other maneuver. So you should to exclude this chest pain is related to uh, aortic dissection. So if the chest pain by this configuration and the ST changes in the ECG, usually this it, it changes related to ST elevation in mind. So we should to give the patient aspirin in form of 300 milligram aspirin. And we should to give him a, according to the situation if you are in a place where there is a cast lab, we can give the patient figure uh, 180 milligram as a loading dose, and we send the patient rapidly to the cast lab. 
if you haven't a cat lab in your uh, place and there is a nearby to you a referral center for uh, there is a cat lab inside it and you have the, the facility to transfer your patient within 120 minutes you should to transfer your patient to the area uh, and the hospital containing a facility of a cat lab okay if you haven't a cat lab and the cat lab is far away from you, you can uh, give the patient at that time thrombolytic therapy uh, according to the protocol you have. You, if you have a streptokinase uh, like here in Egypt, or you can give a TPA if there is uh, a, a contraindication to streptokinase, or uh, if there is, uh, this is the strategy and the molecule of the uh, pharmacological reperfusion uh, in your hospital. After the uh, reperfusion pharmacological, if you haven't a cat lab inside your hospital or you haven't uh, the facility to transfer the patient early, you can transfer the patient late after from three hours to even 24 hours. You can uh, offer the patient a, a emergency a coronary angiography and PCI uh, in another place which containing a cat lab uh, uh, facility. But if you have a cath lab facility in your hospital, you should to move rapidly your patient uh, to the cath lab and to start a reperfusion by uh, cardiac catheterization after visualization of the anatomy of the coronary uh, of this patient. Uh, regarding to which uh, uh, anti uh, uh, maneuver we can give to the patient, it is preferred to give the patient unfractionated heparin according to his weight by loading the dose followed by uh, uh, a dose adjusted uh, according to the weight uh, and the sending the patient after that to the cath lab. Uh, after visualization of the coronary of the artery, uh, we can uh, identify the cause of the obstruction and the cause of STEMI and according to the presence of the legion we can uh, introduce uh, the, the uh, management uh, uh, to the patient. If it is a heavy burden of thrombi, we can do a balloon, we can do uh, aspiration, we can give 2P3A, and then if it is a good flow uh, uh, in the coronary, we can put the patient a stent. If it is not, we can continue 2P3A for 24 to 48 hours and then offer the patient a stent to fix the artery. But if there is no a huge thrombus burden and it is the majority of the patient, we can fix the lesion by stent uh, and a, now a day, a, the, the recommended uh, type of stent is drug eluting stent, except if the patient has a high risk uh, for bleeding. And in this uh, category, our, the patient will go to surgery so near at the time, so we can fix him offer to him a per metal stent if there is a bleeding tendency and we need to stop early uh, the uh, dual antiplatelet. After the procedure, uh, we can uh, send the patient to the ICU uh, and uh, we will continue the, the double antiplatelet for one, a, one year. Uh, and there is a lot of study which uh, of it uh, suggests to give a, a uh, dual antiplatelet uh, beyond this uh, 12 months, but till now, according to the guideline, the recommendation is 12 uh, months therapy of double antiplatelet. Uh, related to the uh, uh, other medication after the PCI, we should to give the patient a high uh, intensity statin, uh, whatever uh, the, the level of uh, uh, lipid profile of him and the high dose statin in uh, uh, form of uh, high intensity statin is 40 to 80 milligram atrovastatin or 20 to 40 rosovastatin. Uh, and if we uh, uh, didn't achieve our target uh, below uh, 70 in the relation to LDL, we can do a combination by izatimib or even a piscinine inhibitor.
this is related to statin uh, and uh, related to a beta blocker. Beta blocker is uh, one of the uh, recommended drug during a myocardial infarction, especially if there is a sort of a reduction of the uh, ejection fraction and also ACE inhibitor, and it should to be in, uh, introduced to the patient very early uh, and continue uh, 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 till uh, re-evaluation of the patient uh, after uh, two years. Uh, after that uh, of re-evaluation, we can decide to uh, continue uh, the beta blocker or, con uh, or stop it or continue the ACE inhibitor or stop it according to the uh, LV function, according to the other comorbidity, which including the diabetes mellitus. So if there is a diabetes mellitus or hypertension, we prefer to give the patient ACE inhibitor or if he is not tolerating the ACE inhibitor, we can offer to him ARBs and we can give the patient beta blocker if he has a high uh, heart rate and we need to achieve a, a proper uh, uh, targeted heart rate and the proper target heart rate is uh, 60 in non-diabetic and 50 in diabetic patients. If you couldn't uh, achieve our target uh, heart rate by uh, uh, beta blocker, we can uh, add to beta blocker evabridine uh, in a uh, first dose 5 milligram BID, which can be increased to 7.5 milligram uh, per day. Uh, we should to calculate the risk of the patient during the hospital stay. Uh, clinical examination is very vital uh, at the uh, admission, during the stay and at discharge. Uh, for uh, searching for mechanical uh, complication and the deterioration of the patient and LV dysfunction. If the patient goes smoothly during the hospital stay, we can, uh, and the chest pain is off, we can discharge the patient with lifestyle modification, uh, double antiplatelet aspirin and ticagrelol or aspirin and clobidogrel if ticagrelol is contraindicated or there is a side effect from it. Out the, or the patient is not tolerating it, uh, beta blocker, uh, AC inhibitor, and if the uh, uh, ejection fraction is less than 40, eblerinone is recommended to be added to the uh, medication, and also uh, a high uh, intensity statin. Uh, then uh, re-evaluation of the patient after two weeks, after one month, after two weeks, uh, two months, six months and one year for the mortality, for readmission, for any uh, serious uh, adverse events.